What's good? Whoa, we overexposed. Quick hack. Take a white t-shirt. If you need a quick diffuser, just use a white t-shirt. Bam. There we go. That looks a lot better, right? What's good, fam? Super stoked for today's episode. And today, we're going to cover music videos. Not just music videos, but how much you should charge for music videos. Say goodbye to those scary days, you know, when clients come to you asking how much for a video and you don't even know where to begin with the budget. In today's video, I'm gonna help you figure out exactly how much you should be charging for your music videos. Let's dive in. All right, y'all, so I've got eight, yeah, that's right, eight, eight topics. We've got eight topics to cover on how you're gonna figure out exactly how much you should be charging for your music videos. So in these topics, we're gonna cover everything from pre-production, production, post-production, post video effects if they're needed, cast, crew, and of course, location and travel. So let's go ahead and break these down one by one. First and foremost, when you're looking at doing a music video, you need to be figuring out the overall length of the song and you know the overall length it's gonna take to kind of produce the project. So first things first is you need to discuss with the client what their vision, if any, is for the project. You know, there's a huge, huge difference between narrative work, you know, telling a story, having a storyline to follow with cast and crew, um, as compared to grabbing the homies, uh, getting in front of, uh, you know, the local grocery store or stop and go mart and just rapping and bumping out of a car. There's a huge difference in the budget and time involved in that. So first and foremost, you need to figure out the song length and just the overall vision they might have for the project. If they don't have a vision, that's first phase is kind of getting that worked out with them and figuring out what kind of project you're gonna be making. You know, is it gonna have a storyline or is it gonna be heavily performance take driven? Uh, and so once you can go from that, you can start looking at the specific points and, and uh, elements that are going to affect the budget. First two I wanna talk about is location and travel. So once you figure out, you know, the overall vision that you have for the project, you can kind of start solidifying locations, you know? So it's, again, let's, let, let's say it's a narrative piece. Let's stick to narratives for this. So it's a narrative piece. We're having a storyline we wanna follow. Most music videos have about, you know, three to four different locations to add some variation. So three to four locations um, that we need to be securing. So then we need to be looking at cost. You know, is it an Airbnb? Is one of the locations just at a local park? Is it a parking garage? What exactly do we need? You know, do we have to actually rent out this location? Do we have to get permits for it? Do we need to contact the city and state? You need to start looking at the different elements like that that are involved in that part of the process. But also don't be afraid to look at possible workarounds. You know, if you're trying to get a house, maybe contact a friend or again, use Airbnb. Um, if you're trying to use like an office or business meeting setting, maybe look at your local public library or something like that where you can rent a space and kind of in a way get what you're looking for but again cut budget so there's always workarounds that you should be conscientious of and you should also communicate to your artists um, next is travel you know so again if you're based in Los Angeles and they want this whole big desert vibe um, for their scene and they kind of want to have it uh, rocky and somewhat mountainous too you know maybe you need to go to Zion National Park or somewhere out in Moab, uh, Utah, or anything like that, you know, so you've got to travel there. So you have to consider that into the budget, you know, is it flying, is it traveling via car? Um, what exactly, you know, what method are you traveling by? Uh, and then you gotta think about lodging too, you know, so if it isn't something local, um, and I consider local anything within 100 miles, if it's within 100 miles, I don't know if you necessarily need to require them to pay and cover hotel um, costs. Um, that's just me. So within 100 miles, I consider local. If it's outside 100, it's no longer local. Um, so anything over 100 miles, you should kind of formulate and include. That looked weird. Wash, wash away. So you should definitely include lodging like that. The next element you should be discussing is the crew required. You know, so again, if it's just uh, you got the artist and they just want to do a simple performance take driven piece um, with them and, and some of the homies just kind of rapping at the camera. Well, then you can probably do something like that yourself with maybe just a PA there to kind of help move the lights around. 
um, transition from location to location with the gear, just make things move a little faster and smoother. And if they're experienced enough, you know, the PA could kind of serve as a technical director as well, just, you know, helping make sure you're going through your shot list accordingly if you have a shot list, which I highly recommend you do. And so in that sense, you know, you're able to kind of cut the budget a lot um, and again, with something really simple like that, you don't need to do a ton. Um, you don't need, you know, eight different people there. You don't need a grip and someone there for boom, uh, getting sound and someone there for as a line producer and a technical director and the director and the DP. You don't need all those people for a simple shoot like that. Now, if your project is more involved, again, it's narrative, there's a story going on you're gonna to start to need more people uh, involved in the crew uh, just in order to get the shots done fast, efficiently, and again, just to make sure that continuity is strong, lighting is even and strong, everything just looks good and cohesive throughout. Because if you're doing everything yourself, I mean, think about the overload. If you're the director, the editor, the producer, the technical director, the gaffer, the DP, if you're doing all these tasks, there's no way you can really, really focus and do them all to the best of your ability. You just can't, it's not possible. Um, so, you know, having more crew is always important and helpful, but again, for smaller um, projects or pieces that are more simplified, maybe it's not necessary to have them. Again, that's, that's up to you, that's your call. Personally, I like that cash, so I'm gonna take more money. Next topic to talk, the next topic I wanna talk, the next topic, I cannot talk. Next topic I wanna talk. <sighs> so the next topic I wanna touch on is cast. So now we need to start looking at what kind of talent we're gonna need for this project and how involved is it? You know, is it a storyline um, with an RB singer? Maybe it's just, you know, a guy and it's uh, a storyline story following him and his relationship with a, a female, or maybe it's something more involved. You know, there's a, a storyline with some mystery kind of thriller essence where someone's robbed and then they have to figure out who, you know, stole the item from them and then it kind of becomes this whole revenge piece. So we have multiple characters, we have a protagonist, an antagonist, we're gonna have, we're gonna need extras for, you know, certain scenes. Um, for instance, if we're just out in a public space or maybe there's a big fight at a bar, we're gonna need some extras and other people involved. So you have to start considering those elements. Um, and again, you're not gonna know any of this unless you're discussing prior to uh, commencing the project with the client, you know, talking about all these aspects and what they have as a vision and what they really wanna see for the project. And so then you can start tallying up those, those aspects. And again, you, there's ways you can cut the budget and there's ways that if the budget's unlimited, let it be. So for instance, for me, you know, I always try to go through agency first because they're gonna provide you the best talent, but agencies are super, super expensive. So if you can avoid them, it's not always a bad idea to do so. So if the budget is more limited um, or it's not anything excessive, then I'm gonna work outside of agencies. I'm gonna find, uh, you know, talented actors or people growing as actors, people looking for portfolio work, and I'm gonna ask them to kind of help out and be a part of the project. And that way I'll, I'll be able to, you know, kind of cut, uh, cut casts. That way I'll be able to cut costs again and provide someone a good opportunity uh, who's also gonna be very focused and passionate about the project. Um, next kind of elements I'm gonna talk about, kind of all in three course, they all, they all go together. So pre-production, production, and post-production. So you need to be considering how much time it's gonna take you uh, or how much time is involved in the process for pre-production, actual production, the shooting phase, and post-production, the editing and finalizing of the project. Pre-production, so really in my opinion, this starts as soon as you begin the conversation with the client because you're consulting them. You know, it, As soon as they contact you and, and ask for your rates, and you start delving into you know the vision for the project, where they're based out of, what they you know what exactly they want to see with the project, when they're trying to release the project, etc. You're starting to get all these elements. You're consulting. You are a consultant. You're providing feedback. You're letting them know what is possible, what isn't possible, and it's taking up your time. And so that needs to be considered. That is part of the budget 100%. Again, if it's a narrative piece and you have to make a storyline and a mood board and a storyboard, all these different visual elements that the artist wants to to see and that you will need in order to shoot it effectively and efficiently um, when actual production comes around, that costs time and time costs money. So that needs to be considered in your budget as well. Um, however, again, if it's just uh, you know a big rob and, and the homies in front of a stop and go mart, 
that doesn't really require storyboarding or mood board or, or getting a shot list developed um, or a call sheet or anything like that. So you don't really need to consider or I wouldn't necessarily put in any pre-production um, into the cost because you're not really doing anything in that regard. So once you kind of add in and factor in the elements of you know how long it's probably going to take you to do all this work and piece it all together, then you can look at production. You know, so how how many days are you going to need to shoot this? Um, is it a bunch? Is it four full days and a half day? Is it two half days and one full day? You know, consider how much time you're going to need to shoot all the aspects of this project. Um, and again, then you're going to consider and, and put that into the budget. And then finally, post-production. So thinking about, you know, how long is it going to take you to edit and put this piece together? There's a big difference between editing and putting together a two-minute music video and a four-and-a-half music video. Moreover, there's a difference between, you know, putting together a music video that is um, got really high BPM, high energy, very aggressive and in your face. Something like that is going to need a lot of hard cuts. Um, it's going to take a lot of shots. It's going to take a lot more time than maybe a piece where it's more poetic and romantic and it's about, you know, longer again just longer and more romantic and vibrant shots and so in that sense there's gonna be a huge difference in post-production time moreover you can look at a lot of the trap game music videos going on right now you know there's a lot of animation going on in a lot of these videos so a lot of After Effects work and that takes a ton 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 of time <laughs> so that is something definitely to consider um, and that takes me to my last final piece to discuss for getting your budget for a music video. That would be video effects. Um, so me personally, I am a cinematographer, director, and editor. I am not a video effects artist. I do not know how to or specialize in, you know, making it look like crazy rocks are floating or lightning comes beaming out of a guy's eyes you know i can do simple animation effects but i'm not going to bother or take my time to do very very in-depth and detailed um animation and video effect work because it's not my specialty it's not my forte um and at the end of the day i don't want to provide the client with a piss poor product so i'm gonna hire i'm gonna outsource uh for that element again so my eight key steps to successfully charging someone uh, the right amount for a music video are location, travel, cast, crew, pre-production, production, post-production, post and video effects. That's eight. We did it. Last and finally, guys, just to give you a little personal insight. So my bare minimum budget is 750. 750 is for a single day shoot um, with an artist, me by myself, no PA, no BTS shooter, like this is bare minimum. 750, that's 750, that is eight hours of shooting in a single day, that is two to three locations, and again, just me and a final edited product. That's my bare minimum, guys. It just kind of builds up from there, again, with all those other elements that I'm factoring in and just kind of continuing to tally up and build and increase the price. Another thing I wanna talk about here quickly, guys, is make sure that you're conveying all these elements and details to the client. A lot of times, clients will see these high budgets, these, these high numbers, they'll see, what? You're charging me $4,000 for a music video? So they're really thrown off when they see this high number. But when you're able to actually, you know, distinctly show them all the little pieces that go in and summarize and make this kind of bigger whole, it makes a lot more sense, you know? So when you can break down that, this is the cost for travel. This is the, co the cost for securing locations. This is the cost for the cast. This is the cost for the crew. This is how much it's gonna cost for me to storyboard, um, create the shot list, get the call sheets out, etc. This is how much for just shooting. This is how much for editing. You know, you can explain all these different elements and it makes a lot more sense and you see, they see these smaller chunks and then they're like, oh, okay. And it starts to make sense to them. So that's just something else to consider. You know, make sure that you are really discussing every aspect of the project with the client ahead of time so they really know all the aspects that are going into it. And so they don't feel like, uh, you know, overwhelmed and like you're screwing them just to get a big paycheck because at the end of the day, music videos, are expensive, um, costly, timely. If you wanna do them right, you gotta fork up the dough. All right, so that is it, y'all. I hope you picked up some great, great pointers and tips on how to properly charge for a music video. For too long did I accept terrible rates, and boy, 
did I suffer in the post-production process. No more, no more. From now on, we will properly charge for our music videos.